everyone, welcome to Abstract Boss. My name is Ashley and I just want to welcome you to week two of the challenges to win the Abstract Boss Award. If you haven't heard of it yet, join the Facebook group below in the description because you get to win a super cool award. All you have to do is submit your artworks and get people to vote on them. So it's extremely simple to do and each week is a different challenge. This week is Flip Cup with Resin. So if you're not sure how to do a flip cup with resin, or you just want some awesome tips and tricks to do it successfully, then stay tuned because I'm gonna walk you through how I did a great flip cup. Now there are bad flip cups too. So I'm also going to show you a failed attempt at a flip cup because everything is a process with resin and figuring out how resin works because it is a beast. <laughs> so stay tuned on this crazy awesome journey and let's get to it. Here is a failed attempt with the flip cup. If you notice, it's just kind of muddied together. These were just solid colors that I poured on and everything else kind of muddied into like a reddish yellow, which turned out great to use on the inside of my sunflower, but was not good for an entire piece. So what I'm gonna do is um, show you guys how to do it correctly. This was just one of my failed experiments and I just wanted to show you how ugly it looks when you put silicone in all the colors, they just combine together. It's not as fun at all. It does not create as much texture and awesomeness. And so make sure you pay attention, stay tuned throughout the whole thing so that way you can see exactly how I do it without the colors muddying together. Now, personally, I like to have a little bit of extra color just to be able to lace throughout the cups. I think it kind of helps separate each individual's uh, cups pour. So if you have enough extra color to do that, I highly recommend it. But let's get to it. To start off, I am mixing all of my pigments together already. I've already mixed all my resin and I poured it into little cups enough to equal the amount of colors that I'm using. So I'll have five cups because I'm using five colors. I'm gonna do the purple, blue, and coral colors all mixed with the silicone. And I'm gonna do the gold and the white with no silicone. I do this so that way not all the resin has the silicone mixed in and so not all the resin is going to react the exact same way. If you do put silicone in all of the colors, then it's very likely that you're gonna have a lot more muddied of a look than if you just do it in some of the colors. When you're ready, make sure you have a lot of cups to flip over. You cannot do just one big flip cup with resin. You're gonna have a huge muddied mess if you do that. So I have put out six cups. I feel like that's going to give me a good amount of coverage with the amount of resin I have for my small piece of wooden canvas board. If you notice the way that I pour the resin in, it's not any particular way like you wanna do with a dirty pour. When it comes to resin flip cup, you just want to be moving quickly. That is kind of the key thing here. Layer them in and move quickly so you can flip and move on. So I'm gonna layer them in all six of the cups as equal as possible, just kind of varying up the way that I pour it in just so that way some colors are going to catch differently than the others. But as long as you're following the not putting silicone in every single color rule, then you're gonna have a great flip cup. Okay, now that I am done putting them in all the cups, I'm gonna go ahead and flip these six colors over and they don't need a lot of time to sit. So all I'm gonna do is take the remainder of the white, gold, purple, blue, and coral, and I'm just going to utilize my fingers to scrape out as much as possible because I don't like to waste any of the resin. And then as soon as I'm done emptying those cups out, then I'm gonna go ahead and lift. Since resin is very slow moving, there is still gonna be some resin stuck in the bottom. If you have space on your canvas or board, then go ahead and set that cup aside on your board. But if you notice, I had no space to do that, so I went ahead and set them aside. I can pull the resin out of them after it cures, so I'm just gonna leave them there during this project. 
As you're moving the resin around, you just wanna make sure that you're covering everything. Because the resin is so thick, you're gonna have issues with it going to every everywhere that you need it to go very easily. And so I just utilized my gloves to just kind of draw with the resin wherever it needed to self-level. Outside of that, the resin does do a really good job at self-leveling and won't have any issues as long as it doesn't have dry contact to try to overcome. If you have a little bit of wet resin, then it will overcome just fine. Before you move on to the next step, again, just make sure that all dry spots are covered with resin. That also includes the sides. So if you notice here, I run my fingers right along each edge to make sure that the resin is going to flow over the sides nicely. After you know everything is covered, you can take a blowtorch to the top. And if you notice, the blowtorch helped bring out extra cells. So I personally, feel like it's a must as a material or a tool to use when it comes to flip cup and resin. Now I'm going to let it cure and we're going to come back to it again tomorrow. The next day I am going to sand the tops. If you notice by looking in the reflection of the light, you can see a couple pits. This happens with silicone and resin. I mean, if you're okay with the art piece having a couple pits, then that's completely up to you. But personally for me, since it is resin, I want it to have that glass-like finish. So you just want to go ahead and sand it and clean it off with alcohol. Make sure you're also cleaning the sides and clean your workstation because after sanding, it is dusty all over the place and you want to make sure that that is not going to jump back into your resin once you do a fresh pour. I'm going to finish the sides with a silver tape. I think it's from like the plumbing section. I just crinkle it to get all the extra lines in it. I don't like it being perfectly smooth and it's nice because it has that straight edge. And so that straight edge can go right along the top there to cover my primed white sides. Then I'm going to do one more clear coat of the resin and voila, check it out. It's absolutely beautiful. I have some close-up pictures here for you to look at, and I'm really happy with this piece. I think flip cups are super easy. That's it for my flip cup masterpiece. Now head on over to the Facebook group and post your flip cup masterpieces so you can enter to win the Abstract Boss Award. And that's it for now. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch y'all next time.